like to welcome everybody out this morning to uh, Valley Town Chapel, Valley Town Cemetery Chapel. And uh, good to see all these smiling faces this morning. <laughs> Amen. We got a couple of announcements we want to go over. Uh, on Saturday, June the 6th, we'll be having a work day from 8 a.m. to about noon. We should be able to get everything done in four hours. But uh, we'd like everybody that can to come. If you can't, why, well, we understand. We won't force nobody to do nothing, but if you're available and you can come out and help us out a little bit, Try to get the church spruced up a little bit. Maybe clean the cloth seats on the pews and do some other stuff inside and maybe do a little work outside and uh, work on the Sunday school trailer. Because I, I really believe we're going to start using that trailer for something in the very near, near future. Uh, on June the 7th, the Lowe family from Bryson City will be singing for us, and Robert Lowe will be bringing the message that morning. That's at the 11 o'clock service. On June the 13th at 6 p.m., the Hodge brothers from Hiawassee, Georgia, and Redeemed from Byersville, Georgia, will be with us at our singing. On July the 11th, the Smoky Mountain Gospel Singers from Topton will be singing at 6 p.m. along with the New Hearts Trio. That's on uh, Saturday, July the 11th. And I hope he's watching this morning because we want to wish Philip Crawford, first we want to wish him, uh, say we hope he's feeling better and, and uh, we pray that uh, he'll be able to be back with us by next Sunday. And uh, he also had a birthday on May the 7th. So we want to say happy birthday to Brother Philip and sing him a little song this morning. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. We appreciate Brother Philip, Sister Rose. I hope Sister Rose is 71. He more hit him the same day. Did he's, you say so? He's 71. 71? Today would have been my mother's birthday. Really? Well, happy birthday, Mother. Amen. We need to remember Linda Jacobs in our prayers. Uh, her husband, Scotty, we've been praying for him, had cancer. Found out about two months ago he had cancer, and they told him the week before he died that he had six to 12 months to live that it went to his brain. And I think they told him that on like Thursday or Friday and he died on Saturday morning. And she's having a real hard time. Of course, you know, it, it always hits, really, after the family's gone, and everything's over with, and you're by yourself, that's when it really hits. So let's pray for her and my cousin Betty Earwood. <clears throat> her nephew was killed in a hit and run yesterday. He was on a motorcycle, and they found him off in a, I think they said a cornfield or the woods or something, where he got knocked off the motorcycle. But the driver, after he hit him, he ran off. So they're still searching for him. But let's remember this family. We need to remember Sister Joan. 
Joan used to bless my heart with her singing. She traveled many a mile to sing about our Lord and Savior. She's over in the nursing home now at Murphy, so we need to remember her. And remember my wife's grandmother, she just got a text that uh, she took a turn for the worse. And the doctor sent her home this week and told the family they need to get things in order. And uh, they said they've done all they can do for her. So let's pray for them, the whole family right now, that uh, God's will would be done. If it's her time to go, let her go peacefully. And uh, remember Kathy Mayberry, she's doing better. She's uh, walking a little bit, but she's still in the chair most of the time, but she's getting where she can walk a little bit. Let's remember our government leaders. Father, thank you again, Lord, for your son today, and I don't ask you to go to Lord, I 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 ask you to go to There's a place of dazzling beauty no human eye has ever seen. With gates of pearl and streets paved with gold, it's a land of milk and honey. Oh, it's more than any dream. It's a land of light beyond the crystal sea. It's a land of light where living is forever, where the sting of death will claim no victory. We are nothing more than just a passing shadow till we reach the land of living beyond the crystal sea. The sun is nothing but a legend in this paradise of dream. The Lamb will be the only life we'll need. It's smooth and walks of jasper built by hands unseen. It's the land of life beyond the crystal sea. It's a land of light where living is forever, where the sting of death will claim no victory. We are nothing more than just a passing shadow till we reach the land of living beyond the crystal sea. <laughs> Today I was thinking about my life here on earth, thinking back over the years. There's been a lot of heartache, sorrow and pain. There's been disappointments and tears. There's also been joy and a deep set in peace that only the more of him known. His spirit, it leads me, teach me and frees me that he gave me when he made me whole. Don't worry about me when it comes time to leave. I'm going to a far better place. I'll have gold strength, not made with hands, 
Blessed is love and his creed. Sing his praises to the countless ages with my Savior forever I'll be. His blessed assurance gives you strength for endurance. When my call comes, don't worry about me. How precious it be with Jesus, my friend, walking together each day. He's with me in the valley. He's with me on the mountain. He'll be with me trial I face. I know there's a time, a place, and a day when my journey toward home is complete. When my work here is done and my last song is sung, He'll call, but don't worry about me. Don't worry about me when it comes time to leave. I'm going to a far better place. On heaven's ghost train, not make me think. Blessed in His love and His grace, singing His praises through the countless ages with a Savior forever I'll be. His blessed assurance gives strength for endurance. When my call comes, don't worry about me. His blessed assurance gives me strength for endurance. When my call comes, don't worry about me. <coughs> Death is an angel sent down from above, sent for the buds and the flowers we love. To his soul in heaven's own way, each soul is a flower in the master's bouquet. Gathering flowers for the master's bouquet, beautiful flowers and decay. Gather my angels and carry it away forever to bloom in the master's bouquet. <coughs> Let us be faithful till life's work is done. Blooming with love till the reaper shall come. Then we'll be gathered together for you. Transplant into room in the master's bouquet, gathering flowers for the master's bouquet, beautiful flowers that'll never decay, gathered by angels and carried away, forever to bloom in the master's bouquet. Faith without works. James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, if one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar.
seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. <coughs> Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Fathers, I come to you this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would apply these words, Lord. Father, whether it be for someone here in the building, Lord, or maybe someone watching on the internet, Lord, Father, I pray that your message would go through. Father, your word says your word will not go void. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would use this for thy glory. And may we give you the glory for all that it does in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, a lot of people talks about faith. Faith is important. You gotta have faith. Unless you claim to be an atheist, you gotta have faith. But it says right here, if you got the faith, but no works, your faith is dead. Now, for an example, I guess, if I run around telling everybody I had faith, but I never entered those doors right there, or doors anywhere where a church is going on, be dead. you'd be dead. you got to put forth some works in order to keep your faith alive. God gives us faith when we're saved. He gives us that faith that we can ask Him to come into our heart. But if we ask Him to come into our heart, Go home, get in the recliner, stay in it all week. The church doors open next Sunday. We're still sitting there in the recliner, watching the tube. Is that works? No. To me, works. is every chance you've got. You need to be testifying. You need to be witnessing. If nothing else, come to the church. Back in the carpet. That works. <clears throat> it's keeping the church clean. <clears throat> there are so many ways to show our works that people never think of it though. I mean, it's simple. Anything we could do 
to uplift the kingdom of God. That's our works. Whether it be get on the phone, call your next door neighbor, ask them if they need anything. Ask them if they need a ride to town when you're going to town. Give somebody a drink of water. Take them a meal. There's so many things we can do to show our works. Just call your neighbor and tell them how much you love them, how much you appreciate them. I had a neighbor over here. But there wasn't a day went by that we didn't speak to each other. We cared about each other. If we thought something was wrong, we'd go see about them. And I had another neighbor on the other side. The only time he'd show up is if he was wanting to accuse you of something. He come over one day and asked me if I'd been trying to poison his chickens. <laughs> I thought to myself, if I was going to poison anything, I'd poison them barking dogs of yours. Because <laughs> he got about 20 of them. <laughs> big sin. And any time they hear a sound, they can't tell where that sound's coming from, they go crazy. But, seriously, some people knows how to be a neighbor. And some of them thinks that being a neighbor is just, just trying to stir something up and things ain't going right for them. Anybody else got neighbors like that? But he was always, if something was going wrong, He'd always come to my house. Now I'm one, I don't bother nobody. I tend to my business. I let everybody else tend to their business. And I think that's the way everybody should be. I mean, you know, tend to your own business. Don't go around trying to stir up trouble with somebody. But getting back to works. Sorry, I got off subject there, but getting back to works. Every time that we're out in town, I guarantee you, we pass somebody that needs a kind word. You know, if you got a smile on your face and you walk up to somebody, hey, good morning, how are you today? You know, that might make their day. Because we don't know what kind of day they're having. They may feel like they're way below the bottom. But if we could just speak to them with a smile on our face, let them see Jesus in us. That's works. But if you go home, get in that recliner, and sit there for two weeks, the only time you get up is to get a glass of water, go to the bathroom, or go to bed. What's that? You ain't helping yourself. You sure ain't helping nobody else. I'm bad for that when I'm at home. I'll sit in my chair and I'll ride back and turn on the tube. And if I get thirsty, honey, how about pour me a drink? 
a lot of times from Sunday evening till probably up to about Wednesday. My work is just as dead as a doornail. I'm guilty. I can preach this yes, because I'm guilty. I know what it's like. Because when I get home on Sunday evening, I'm done till I have to get up. <laughs> I think that's the way most of us are. <laughs> if we're truthful, 90% of us are like that. Right. If we're truthful. Yeah. But you know, the Bible tells us that an idle mind is what, man? Yep. Devil's workshop. Yep. And what happens when we burn back in that recliner? They get so relaxed. <laughs> we get out. What happens when we get out? Don't think of bad thoughts. Satan gets in there and starts stirring up something. Yeah. I think that's why I sit there from Sunday. Wednesday or Thursday, sometimes even Friday. The devil gets in there and yeah, tells me how good it feels just to say here. Not a worry in this world. Or be getting up, checking on the neighbors, making sure they're all right. <coughs> I think there are like 200 apartments out where I live. It would keep me busy all week if I would put my works to work. Just checking on my neighbors. Hey, you need anything? It lasted you all week. Yeah. You like it? Yeah, it could be. Here, here comes that old past again. Yeah, that's the worst I But it is, we let Satan take over us too easy by having an idle mind. I know when a woman's doing her housework, It's got to make the tired, because I get tired just watching her. It makes me want to take a nap. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad she ain't here. <laughs> I'd be in trouble on the way on. But really, <clears throat> we need to put our works, keep our works going. Because faith without works is dead. Right. Now I know we, uh, you know, I, I asked y'all about having a work day. Now most churches that I've been to, you call for a work day, you go, you may be sitting there by yourself. <laughs> now I'm not saying that to make nobody mad. But that's just the way people are in this time that we live. Well, let somebody else do that. You know, the more that's here, the less we're all going to have to do. Right? right. Yeah. If every one of us showed up at 8 o'clock, we'd probably be done with it. Nine or ten. Could ten you push that out to nine o'clock instead of eight o'clock. <laughs> oh, I forgot. That's your day to sleep in. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. I 
านก็เนี่ยพี่ไม่ทำเยอะมากก็อย่าหนาวไอ้ยิ่งเต็มดอนเลยบันเลยแพ้ I I I saw me Rose on telephone the other day I want to tell this and I said I came by your house this morning it's kind of early so I was afraid to stop she said what time was it I said oh it's about eight o'clock she said yeah she said I always get up on Saturday morning and What was you said? I feed and then I go back yeah. to bed. And she feeds and then she goes back to bed. It's more like ten o'clock when I get up then. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can make it. I'll make it by nine. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, I'll try to edit that out. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, we. If everybody's here. When we have something to do, what would take all day to do for one or two, you get done in a couple of hours, and everybody's free. But but most churches have a well. Let somebody else do it. I just don't feel like it today. So the one or two that shows up, they're there all day when they could be doing something else yourself. Why would anybody want to come up here and mow on Sunday? <laughs> They don't have anything else to do. Mm -hmm. Lord mercy. Lord forgive them, for they don't know what they do. I'm getting off bad today, but that's all right. You know, it's my heart's desire. To see our people putting forth good works, so we can grow. I would love to see every bench full. I would love to see church sitting out here, sitting here, sitting here. Two right there, one right there, one right there, one back there. And them full. Not so we can say we've done nothing. But say, look what God's done for us. Amen. If we'll put forth our best works, God will reward us. But if we come with that, you know, oh, I just don't feel like it. Let somebody else do it. There's one or two here that's younger than I am. We'll just let the young ones do it. Well, we ain't got but two young ones, three, counting Robbie. But three can't do it all. It takes everybody coming together. As a team, put forth their best works, so that God can reward us with more workers. And when more workers comes in, we can do even more. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of things I'd like to to do in here. I don't know how nobody else feels about it, but I'd like to panel this white wall in. I just think it would match the rest of the building to do that. Plus, it gives us a little more insulation, you know, if we put that, what is they call that board right behind this? But I would really love to see some work going on. We've got some lights here that needs to be emptied. Because <laughs> we're going to have to buy us a big ladder in order to do that. Cause none, out, none out there, cause none that I've got is high enough. Because I'm not going no higher than before I can hold on when I'm on the ladder. I'm not either until I'm flying out of here. That's right. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't gonna worry about them bugs then. <laughs> but 
There is so much that we can do in this little building. How many ever noticed when you're standing here, you're level? Anybody ever noticed that? But you get down here, it's almost like you're leaving. The, and the further you go, the worse it gets. I mean, that would probably be the town's part to do that, but if we had workers, we could do it. The only thing we'd have to do is, is really uh, a uh, forklift. Jerry, I've been on the floor trying to jack up a floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to jack this nothing. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> if we had workers, though, yeah. we could do things like this. The only thing it would take is a forklift to gently pull each side of it and some blocks put under it, under each pillar. And you go all the way across. You got it done. It's a day's work. But you got to have the ability to do it. I know you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. Phil couldn't do it. Ray couldn't do it. I don't know if Daniel would do it or not. If I could, I would. <laughs> <laughs> but I would find myself out here trying to you know because I, mean? I see that it needs to be done. And I would, I'm not able to do it, but I would be able to try to do it. Y'all <laughs> said Steve Curtis and them, you know, Jokey Lodge. That's what they're doing over with our main bed. Leveling it up. Yeah. And the, and the main fell and hit him last week. And, and Tore his face all up, oh, he injected and right through fell or something. Oh. And got a face full of stitches now. Oh, man. But I don't know, but he, him and his brother, I think, does that. But I firmly believe if we will let our work show, wherever we're at, whoever we come in contact with, I believe God will reward us with more people that would get in here and help. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can't do no more. And probably getting the town to do this would be like getting them to build a, a new community center. Yeah. They'd say tear it down first. Yeah. And this building does not need to be torn down. Well, it, would it this not be a landmark. historical uh, list in Rosie? This no, it's uh, not. No, it used to be. So they do you want it, It's never been listed in the oh, yeah? archives because I did a research on it and I even talked to Jane Swan about it. Oh, and man. she said no. And then when the church started, there's too much done. If you've done, touched anything, you yeah. can't put it in there. Oh, okay. I know Hubert thought it was, but I went back and searched everything I could online. And okay. I well, I, I, I had it in my mind that it used to be a... Yeah. Well, it is historical yeah. to the people that yeah. live here. Yeah, to the people that live here, it's historical. Because it's built in 1904. But, you know, we could get this done if we had the manpower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I seen, well, I sold my building. And the builder supply furnished a, a forklift. And they came and lifted the building up with that forklift. We had the trailer right under it. Set the building down on top of it. That was so neat. 
most of the time you see a pullback coming. Yeah. Pull it up and nine times out of ten you're going to run something when you do that. But this was so ingenious and I thought to myself that would be a good way to fix the church, you know, where the floors. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? It ain't failed, but it's sinking. Sinking, yeah, sinking. But I believe that if we'll get out and work and show our love for Jesus Christ to those around us. I could have big plans for this little church. I would love to see it full. I've heard so many stories about when it was, you know, and funerals and, and uh, pious church meetings and revivals and stuff like that. But I would really love to see it full with church set out and them full. And people still standing on the outside. Raise the windows up. I'd love to see it like that. Yeah, I would too. And I believe God can do it. But it's going to take some work from us. I know, I know, I'm not saying we got to get out, get out here and pick this church up and, and put blocks in under it. God knows that we're not able to. But God can send the people that are able to do this. I've seen it happen before. Just last week, I've got a friend down in Hull, Georgia, right out of Athens. He started a church last year. And they're paying I don't know how much for this metal building. They had to go in and build the stage and uh, put carpet in, put pews in. And they don't tell me how much money they got in it. Last week, a pastor called him that had a church that had been sitting for two years. Big, beautiful church and gave it to them. God can work miracles. <clears throat> I think they were paying close to 2000 a month just for the building, not counting the work they had done to it. I mean, he had, he built it up. He had a, or God built it build it up to where they had a good congregation. But God seen the need that they needed a bigger, better church and just fell in their life. I'm not saying we need a bigger, better church. I'm not saying that. This little church is fine and dandy. I love this little church. But God can throw the workers in our lap that can lift this church up. Make it level. Maybe in time we can replace these windows, windows like this. I would like to see some improvements done. But, I don't want to get ahead of God. I want God to lead on whatever we decide to do as a church. Now, until God tells me any different, I'm content to be in here the rest of my life. Unless I get run off. And I hope, pray, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> but as long as you want me, I'm here. I have no intent of going no more. Now, God may change that. And if 
if he does, what do you do? When God speaks, you obey. You obey. But if time lasts, I'd like my body to be right there when I go. But it ain't far after where I'm going to be buried from right here. He's the only family. He's the only church members. We don't have far to go. <laughs> But I, I'm content. I've never been more content than anything in my life. I love this church. I love y'all. I want to see us grow. I want us to do things that God will reward us for. Whether it's down here, Right there. I don't want to do nothing just so look what I do. I don't want it for that reason. I want to be pleasing to God. I want this church to be pleasing to God. That's why that's why I want to make sure that everybody understands. Faith without works. It's dead. You can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't put forth some works. And I'm not trying to single anybody out. I know I keep looking at Rose and, and Barbara, but don't pay no attention to that. I am not trying to single nobody out. Because I believe we got good workers here. You got me busy, Jerry. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm <laughs> trying to problem solve. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> when God called me to preach, <clears throat> I had no idea that I'd ever be a pastor. In fact, I said I didn't want to be a pastor. But I feel so blessed. That y'all asked me to be your pastor. And I just want to be the pastor, first of all, that God wants me to be. And I want to be the pastor that y'all need. Not necessarily what you want, but what you need. Because I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. If I preach something that makes you mad and I can back it up with the word, you're not going to get no apology. I mean, that's just plain and simple. But if I preach something that's way out in left field, call me down. Because I'm human. I certainly ain't no saint. I ain't. I ain't perfect. But I want to be known as a worker. I don't want to keep going home every Sunday, getting in my recliner, laying back, forgetting about.
out to wear her on. I want to get out and do something that's going to build the church. Amen. I'm not talking about building four walls or extending the walls out to the second row out there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about building the church. I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the people. I want to build the church. But I can't do it. I can do it. First of all, it's going to take God. If He's not in it, it ain't gonna mount nothing. It's gonna take God, and then it's gonna take all of us coming together as one and working. Yeah, well, I've been went over. I'm gonna be far now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love each and every one of you. If I can do something for you, please call me. That's what I'm here for. 